What's up everyone? I wanted to do a video about uh, my roll cage and why I chose the design I did. It seems like my dog wants to come in the garage, so I'm going to let her in. Cool. Um, it seems like there's a lot of, uh, or there's, there's not a lot of information about roll cages out in, uh, or actually there's not a lot of information about a lot of stuff, it seems like, in the amateur racing world. So um, I did a big design study and went through nine different types of designs to kind of find out what each tube did and uh, whether or not it was beneficial to have those extra tubes as weight. Obviously, like SCCA and NASA uh, have spec cages that you, a minimum requirement that you must have to to meet their specifications but a lot of people do extra stuff and i've seen tons of stuff on instagram and stuff um and it all looks cool but some of it looks kind of questionable and uh yeah you know i don't know if it works or not and even, even <laughs> themselves don't really have uh that engineering background to, to determine if those um extra tubes you know are really worth the wait so I did my own study and uh, we'll go through that in a minute, but I'll walk around my car and kind of show you some stuff and talk about some, some basic stuff that uh, you should at least know without doing FEA and all that stuff. So here's my cage. Uh, it's a pretty basic design. Uh, you've probably seen similar ones before. Um, as I was saying, SCCA and NASA have their, their requirements uh, and I just added to that slightly um, in, in places that I thought were a benefit. Um, so I had the X brace here. Uh, I don't know what you call this tube, but um, added that. Added the diagonal bar, and then I also tied in the front strut towers. Um, these are it's a ten point cage, so it's attached to the chassis in ten different points. And um, I used inch and a five eighths for all the majority of the tubing, the tubing that is required, and it's forty one thirty chromoly, and then. Some of the extra tubing is inch and three eighths just to save a little bit of weight, and that's all 083 wall. Um, so people talk about, you know, triangulating your cage and stuff, and that's true, um, but some stuff is uh, maybe not beneficial, but as you can see, there's, so there's basically four triangles that's made with this X brace, um, and there's, you know, two triangles at the top, triangles for the X bars, so um, when you do that, the idea is to make like a true space frame, which means that the tubes will be loaded in tension and, and, or, and or compression uh, only, because uh, if it's loaded in tension or compression, you get a lot less deformation, a lot less uh, movement, for lack of a better word, than you would if you have, um, have it in a bending type load. So. But that said, if you do have it triangulated, but your tube is bent, this, like, like this top uh, tube, there, it will still be loaded and bending even if it is triangulated just because of the, the tubing not being straight. Because it'll, even though it'll be kind of pulling on a, like a tension type load, it'll be trying to uh, straighten that tube out. And that's, that's generally just a, a bending load. Um, but so the idea is you wanna, you wanna have straight tubes as much as you possibly can. Obviously that's not possible um, in a lot of scenarios, the reason that top tube is not straight is because we need more clearance from a helmet and whatnot. So we want to try to keep straight tubes, but obviously getting the proper clearance is, is, is probably more important. Um, so as I was saying earlier, I went with 4130. It's a little bit more expensive material, but um, you do get some extra strength out of it. And... Yeah, so I made a few mistakes and I made a lot of uh, different designs and did a lot of uh, FEA on this and we'll go through that in a minute. Um, one of the mistakes I made was um, we kind of cha changed where we were mounting my uh, these down bars in the back and when we added the X brace, I didn't really think about how much clearance I needed for the fuel cell. So I have to modify that a little bit, but I think I got a, a way to work way to make it work that's kind of my next project um but anyway other things we added were um hard top brackets for my spoon hard top uh, and yeah there she is now let's go check out the data 
Okay, so the data. Uh, originally, I went through all of this data one by one, but it was uh, pretty boring. I did a lot of simulations. So instead, I tried to organize it to just show the interesting stuff. So we'll just we'll go to that. But just to show you, I did a lot of simulations here. But first, let me show you the different cage designs to say I have an idea of, the, of what I tried out. Number one, cage one. This is just a basic SCCA cage with uh, NASCAR style sidebars. Cage two is the same thing, but just with the X-brace sidebars. Cage three, I just added a second diagonal. Maybe not the best of ideas, but... Um, cage four, I went to the full X-brace in the back. Cage five was the X-brace with a roof diagonal bar. And then uh, cage six, I got rid of the roof diagonal bar and just tried these little tube gussets, I'm calling them. Then cage seven was the full X brace with the roof diagonal bar, and then these lower uh, tie bars from the main hoop to the down bars there. Cage eight was the same thing as cage seven, only I added the, the FIA bars as they're called um, here. And then lastly, cage nine was, um, this, I'm calling it a V bar setup, but Placing two V's in the in the roof in the rear down bar area, and then also kept those lower tie bars. Anyway, so that's the cages that I that I designed, and then uh, let's let's look at the actual test that I performed on these cages. Okay, so here's the simulations that I performed on the on the cage. First one, uh, I guess first I'll, I'll mention that this was done on SolidWorks 2019. With premium simulation software, um, I did the first simulation and demonstrated convergence. Uh, and that that last uh, test that I ran was a 40 element per beam. And um, yeah, everything was pretty much performed on the driver side only. But anyway, so let's go through these. So I did a, a side load to kind of test the the difference between these two sidebars. So basically, I used the estimated weight of my vehicle and applied it directly to the side of the sidebars. So in the NASCAR style bar, it's placed on both of these nodes here, so it's distributed a little bit more evenly. And then on the X brace, it was just placed right on the center node here in, in the X. Um, and then the second test I ran was this front roof crush test. Um, this is kind of based off of FMVSS 216, so there's a... Uh, load that's applied to this this junction here and it's applied at a certain angle and uh, Per the FMVSS, it's one and a half uh, times your vehicle weight and you cannot get more than 127 millimeters of deformation um, We'll obviously do a little bit better than that since this is a race car, but that is the FMVSS requirement uh, And then I placed that same load but only to the main hoop at the at the rear area So I'm calling that the rear roof crush and again, it's 3150 pounds um, then I wanted to kind of see how my cage behaved in a torsion type load, so how stiff this cage was. So I replaced um, a 500 pound load upward and a 500 pound load downward on these uh, front down bars. Um, so typically when a, a manufacturer tests the chassis torsional rigidity, it's actually placed at the front strut towers. But since uh, I'm more testing just my uh, occupant cage type setup here, I, that's why I placed it here. The last test um, is again the same kind of torsion test only applied to the rear area and this is actually where my um, uh, strut towers are so this one's a little bit more indicative of what you would see a manufacturer do. So now let's get into some of the actual results here. Okay so here's the res here's some of the results here. Um, before we dive in there into these results so I want to mention that you should kind of look at your roll cage as an entire system, not just the individual bars. I mean, I kind of, I'm kind of calling out uh, certain bars here to kind of explain what they do, but um, the whole, the whole structure itself acts as a system. So it's important to kind of keep that in mind when you're um, designing a cage. So that said, let's jump into these the sidebar comparison. Um, this one's a pretty basic comparison, just of NASCAR versus X brace. Um, a lot of times people say the NASCAR bars are, are safer, and that may be true because uh, you can get them further away from uh, 
the occupant, but we'll see here that the, the NASCAR bars, you know, had a fairly low stress um, and a displacement of 3.1 uh, millimeters. The, the X bars had a, a considerably amount higher stress, but about the same deformation. Um, and then you notice that the, the weight of the NASCAR bars are, uh, you know, considerably heavier than the X brace bars. Um, and the, so the reason this, this stress here in the X bars was a bit high is because there's this concentration right at this front down bar. So this, this bar here, there's a bit of a concentration right where it mounts to the chassis. Um, so I ended up going with the X brace bars and, and I knew this was the case, but I also planned on uh, doing a bar to the front tower bar that you might have seen earlier. Um, so I ran a simulation just to see how that front, front strut bar uh, aids that, that stress concentration. And as you can see here, it's actually, uh, it reduces it. We can't quite see the nodes on there, but the maximum stress went down quite a bit. And you can see the dis distribution of stress across the side of this whole cage. So this is what I was talking about as a system. Yes, you have, uh, just if you're just looking at these X bars, you may see some concerns, but if you're tying into the front strut tower and you have this tie bar going to the rear strut tower, it distributes that side load stress all the way across the cage, which, which is a good thing. So in adding just that, that front uh, strut bar, um, it actually dropped the stress quite a bit down, uh, much lower than the NASCAR side bars, and the displacement is uh, less than a millimeter. So yes, we did almost add all that weight back to the NASCAR, but these bars will also um, improve uh, other aspects of the cage as well. So let's move on to front roof crush. Okay, so here's the results for the front roof crush. Um, so I did a baseline of just a basic SCCA cage, so that basic uh, cage number two that I showed earlier. Um, and with that uh, FMVSS type load, we had a stress of 4.14, um, which this is, so the, for my material, if you know this, this cage isn't 100% indicative of what my actual cage turned out to be. For this material that I'm using, this was close to a, a yielding stress, so um, a bit a bit concerning, but the displacement was still only 11.4 millimeters, which would definitely pass the F and VSS requirement, but being a race car, we wanted to do better than that. Um, so there's a number of things I tried. Uh, first, these, these tube gussets that you see here in this middle picture. Um, the, the FEA might not be 100% accurate because these are pretty short tubes um, and may not meet the kind of the rules of per per performing FEA on this, but uh, still gave some pretty um, consistent results, so I'm going to show them anyway. Um, so this this actually showed a, a failure, um, and which is you know obviously not good. You can see this little picture where it failed here, basically at this at this joint. Um, so, so these tube gussets were showing that it concentrated the stress right at this joint, which um, caused it to fail and had a, a very large displacement of 32 millimeters. So it's kind of an example of these things possibly making things worse than uh, just not having them at all. Um, next thing I tried was this roof diagonal that you see here. Just adding the roof diagonal um, lowered the stress considerably from the base cage and then also the uh, the displacement dropped a huge amount as well. Um, so seeing as that this roof diagonal um, was, was, was so effective, I just gave up on the, the tube gussets and didn't try to analyze any further. Um, and then, so this V-bar setup that you see here, this had a similar uh, effect as the just the standard roof diagonal. A um, little bit higher stress, um, tiny bit higher displacement, but roughly the same. Um, and you should also note that this roof or this V-bar setup is, is symmetrical, where, whereas this, uh, this the regular roof diagonal is not. Um, so if you're building a cage that you want to be perfectly symmetrical, this might be a better option than this, as long as you have, you know, the appropriate headroom and whatnot. Um, so the last thing I tried was the roof diagonal with the FIA bars. So these, these bars here, um, this was the most uh, structurally sound setup. Um, you can see that the stress here was, you know, 66% uh, 60 less than just the roof diagonal alone. And then the uh, displacement dropped almost half as well. So those are kind of the results of the front roof crush. I would recommend definitely having a roof diagonal bar or these, this V-bar type setup 
because it definitely improved the performance over just a basic cage. And if you're going to do these tube gussets, I would uh, recommend you know looking further into that because from what the little bit that I researched, they do not seem to be very good performers. Let's look at the rear roof crush. Okay, so this was a kind of interesting result in that adding material to this uh, the cage, it didn't really improve performance and actually it dropped just slightly. So the, the baseline, the basic SCCA cage right here, um, you'll see that it had a, a, a really low stress. So remember it was 4.6 to, to the eighth that um, where we start having a yielding condition. So we're really good here. And then very little displacement at you know 0.4 millimeters, less, less than a millimeter of displacement. So a couple of the interesting thing here, I thought adding the rear X brace would make this even better at least, uh, you know, slightly, but it actually increased the stress uh, a small amount and the displacement, you know, was basically the same, tiny, tiny bit increase. Um, so this is a case where adding material didn't really improve that, you know, load on this side. Now, that said, the basic cage is not symmetrical, so it doesn't have a diagonal running to the passenger side. So I'm, I'm pretty confident that if you were to perform this test on the passenger side of the two cages, there would be an improvement. And then the uh, the rear V bars um, was kind of the same things as the as the X brace. The the stress rose a little bit, and the displacement um, actually displacement went down just a slightly bit. But I would I would call all these displacements the same. Okay, so the front torsion results. Um, again, this was performed on the basic cage first, and then just the different iterations after that. Um, so oddly, most of the uh, additions didn't really. Um, improve the you know the performance of this torsion test so the basic cage um, had a displacement of four millimeters um, and then cage seven which was uh, adding the roof diagonal and the x brace in the rear uh, actually saw a little bit greater displacement um, then cage eight so that's the cage right here with the fia bars that was the only thing that kind of made a difference um, in the the main cage area here so that dropped the the displacement about a half a millimeter um, and reduce the stress just a tiny bit, but still not uh, not much of a performance gain there. Um, so cage nine, the V-bar setup, again about the same, no uh, no real improvement there, and actually yeah, a tiny bit worse in the in the displacement here. But the thing that did make a difference was adding these front strut bars. Uh, so that kind of triangulates this this front end here. Um, so not only did these uh, strut bars improve our our side performance. Um, it also improves our torsion performance uh, a large amount. So with with those strut bars, um, you can see the stress dropped a, a very large amount and then the displacement went to less than a millimeter. So this is going to help uh, keep that cage really stiff. Okay, last but not least, the rear torsion. Um, again, started with the basic cage. These uh, down bars are just basically cantilever beams at that point. So. Uh, very high stress, very high displacement, nearly a yielding stress. Um, cage 5, adding the X brace, um, this did a, a considerable amount and dropped the stress to more than half as well as the displacement. Um, but then adding the lower tie bars, as you see in cage 7, that uh, dropped it uh, quite a bit more, down to 1.7 millimeters of displacement. So that again, that triangulating of that joint uh, really reduces the... Uh, the deformation. Looking at cage nine with the, the V-bar setup, it's, it's actually pretty similar to cage seven um, with less than two millimeters of, of deformation. So I definitely recommend triangulating these if you're wanting to have a very stiff back end. Okay, so in summary, this is kind of the cage I chose, um, obviously with the with the front strut bars. Um, the reason I chose this one, this uh, the back end was very stiff and then the, the, the roof diagonal bar just gave me just enough clearance um, for my helmet. So obviously we had to bend the, this bar, which is not ideal. Like I said, you should try to keep every bar straight as you can. But uh, you, you got to have your clearances. If I had um, if I had enough clearance, I probably would have done this this V bar setup. So if you have if you had the headroom clearance, um, this is probably a little bit better setup setup only because it's uh, 0.6 pounds lighter than the cage seven. And uh, you know, perform basically the same. 
Now, if you're, if you're looking to have a fully symmetrical cage, um, this is probably a, a great way to go, only I would add the second diagonal to the passenger side um, in the main hoop area. And then definitely always add those strut bars if you can and keep them straight if you can. Let's go back out to the garage. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Um, I didn't say this earlier, but I'm definitely not a roll cage expert and I don't do this for a living, but I am an engineer and I've done similar projects, uh, not quite as involved as this. So um, hopefully the data uh, speaks for itself, but um, there's a ton of information here so and that, I, that I learned and I probably didn't cover it all, but if you guys have questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I'll definitely try to answer them the best I can. And if anybody wants my design matrix, that I, my Excel sheet, um, I'm willing to share that too if it helps them make better decisions and help them get a, a safer cage. So anyway, uh, thanks again. I appreciate you watching and we'll see you out there.